Hello, this is Jeannie Alcott. I want to tell you about a very important day for your life. On Sunday, May 19th, in just a few days, it will be the day of Pentecost. On that day, God is calling John and me to pray over you. We believe new spiritual power is going to fall on your life. We will take communion and speak God's word over you and every need you have. We'll anoint you by the Spirit of God to see greater miracles come. So tell us right away that you want to be a part of this day of Pentecost prayer. We believe God will send forth the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be a great miracle outpouring on that day, May 19. Call 918-459-9191 or go to our website, alcottministries.org. The power of Pentecost is going to fall. Don't miss it. This is Jeannie Alcott. We're excited that you joined us today for the Word of Power broadcast with Jeannie Alcott. We encourage you to hear God's Word concerning your desires and dreams and His healing for you. Let God speak to your heart through this teaching and anointed time of prayer. Then, Jeannie and John invite you to contact them. They will pray the prayer of faith for you. Now, listen for a word of power for your life. It sure is a joy to be with you. This is Jeannie Alcott. We're talking about what can make a big difference in your life. You know, many times when we think about how we need something done for us, we think we must be helped by someone powerful or who has wealth or position. We feel if we can just get more favor with someone or get an answer from an authority figure, then we could see our dream come to pass. But many times God has a different way for this to happen. It involves kindness. Have you ever thought about how much your future could be changed just by being kind to someone? I know we don't think of kindness as having much power, and yet God's Word shows us how He empowers those who operate in kindness. We step out and we give compassion and consideration. When we're thoughtful and think about others, that releases spiritual power from God's hands. He honors and rewards it. As we help others see their dreams happen, our own dreams can happen. So the future can change by kindness because it fulfills dreams. You see, kindness becomes an instrument that God uses. Now think of that. Kindness is an instrument in the hands of God. So every time you have a word of consideration or you're generous to someone, God takes that in his hands and he uses it to change circumstances and conditions. So let's talk about how your kindness can cause dreams to be fulfilled. See how God uses it to do amazing things. There was an employee of a grocery store who saw this become reality in so many wonderful ways. It was amazing what God did because of an act of kindness. This young man was stocking jars of orange juice onto the shelves of the grocery store. It was just another day at work. But this day, God gave him an opportunity to show kindness, and because he took it, it changed the future. There was a teenage boy watching him stock the shelves, and he was taken by the process, so he was staring at what was being done. And after a while, the employee, Jordan, noticed this and stopped to invite the boy to help him. Well, one reason this is so unusual is because this boy is autistic. But soon, the two of them were stocking the shelves and having a good time. Jordan would hand the orange juice containers to the teenager, and he would put them right where they needed to go. Well, the father of the boy was there, and so he filmed the whole process on his phone. It was so wonderful to him to see his boy working that way. And then afterwards, the father spoke with Jordan and thanked him for being so kind. And in the conversation, he found out that Jordan had a dream of going back to school to become a teacher, which, of course, it was evident he was destined to be a teacher by the way he was teaching this autistic boy to stock the shelves. That was in his heart. So when this family got home, they set up a fund on social media to raise money for an education for Jordan. And they posted the video of the kindness he had shown to their son. In the meantime, the grocery store where this happened saw what was going on and decided to offer the autistic young man a part-time job stocking shelves. And eventually, enough money was raised for Jordan to be able to go back to a nearby university to complete his dream of becoming a teacher. So because of this kindness, and the kindness of the family back to Jordan, and the kindness of the grocery store to offer a job, this young man was able to see God's will fulfilled, and he got his education. 
and the autistic teenager saw his dream come to pass to have his own job and be productive and fulfilled. Now that's amazing. See how the future was changed by kindness? What dreams are moving around you right now that you cannot see in the spiritual realm? They're there, and God is waiting for those to be touched by your life, by your kindness, and that will activate those dreams into reality. They can be fulfilled because you obey what's in your heart to do. And God will guide you. He'll give you the words to speak and the actions to take. But here's the thing. You have to have your heart open and your attitude right so thoughts of kindness can make their way into your spirit. Otherwise, you won't be able to hear how to be kind or what to do at the right moment if your thoughts are always on something you're facing, your fear or disappointment or your need. You have to get your disposition to the place that you're ready when the opportunity comes. That's what God does. He sends the opportunity. This is what he did with a man, Joseph, when he was in the worst of conditions. Joseph had been sold by his brothers because they wanted to get rid of him out of jealousy. And the caravan to which they sold him took him to Egypt. And there, even though he worked hard and served his master, he was accused of a crime he didn't commit. So he ended up in prison. But even in that place, God had favor on him and he was given important responsibilities under the man who ran the prison. Now, right in the midst of what he was experiencing, in came two servants of Pharaoh's that were in disfavor, a baker and a butler. So they were put in prison. And one day Joseph noticed how depressed they were. So he asked them, why do you appear so dejected and sad today? He was just being kind to them. And that's when they described how they had dreamed the night before, but they didn't understand the interpretation of the dreams. So at that point, God gave Joseph the interpretation of the dreams. It was bad news for the baker. He was not going to regain favor. But the dream of the butler meant he was going to be restored to his position. So Joseph said to him, Think of me when it shall be well with you, and show kindness, I beg of you, to me. And mention me to Pharaoh, and get me out of this prison. Then he explained to him how he'd done nothing to deserve being in the dungeon. Well, the interpretation of the dreams happened, just as Joseph said. The servant was restored to his position, but he forgot about Joseph and didn't say anything to Pharaoh, until one day Pharaoh had a dream that no one could interpret. And that's when the servant thought about how Joseph had been able to interpret his dream. So he told Pharaoh about him, and Joseph was brought in to interpret the dream. He was able to do it, and Pharaoh was so impressed by everything Joseph said and by the Spirit of God that was in him that he gave him charge over everything. He was not just taken out of prison, but he was promoted and given a wife, and he had a family and a great position. Most of all, the dream he had as a young man that one day he would have others bowing down to him was fulfilled. Why? Because of the kindness he had shown to others when he was in the worst of conditions himself. It can cause dreams to be fulfilled. That's what happened for Joseph and for the servant and also for Pharaoh. The act of kindness had so much power attached to it. And your kindness has so much power attached to it. God wants to use it to see the dreams he's put in the hearts of people come to pass. But it will take reaching out to others even when we feel that we can't. This is what a man was facing when he wanted to see his dream come to pass. His name is John Landy. It was his dream to win the national championship race in Melbourne. This was in 1956, and he was competing with some of the best. So the race was on, and the runners were in their third time going around the track, and John appeared to be able to win it. He was neck and neck with another runner by the name of Ron Clark. And as soon as they were going around the curve, a third runner tried to squeeze between them, And when he did, his foot hit the heel of Ron with his spikes. That caused Ron to fall on the track, and the man who tripped him fell onto the side of the arena. Now, this would permit John to keep running and for sure win the race. But instead of leaving Ron fallen on the track, John doubled back and went over to Ron and helped him up. Now, that's a great act of kindness. But you would think at that point the race was over for both of them. But John had a dream, and he was not going to let go of it. So he took off running again, and it was as if his speed was multiplied. He went around that track, and one by one, he began passing every runner, leaving them in the dust. And by the time the race was over, he was way out ahead and won the national championship. 
It was a great victory. But you know, of all the things remembered the most about John Landy is not necessarily his championship win, nor the fact that he went on to break the four-minute mile. But it's this act of kindness. And to this day, there is a statue that commemorates his act of kindness of raising up a fellow runner at the risk of losing his own dream. Oh, when we follow our heart of kindness and we do what God has put in us, dreams can be fulfilled. It's taking the time to follow the leading from God's Spirit. And in spite of the fact it may not make sense, do what He puts in our heart. Then allow Him to take care of the outcome. We put away our selfish desires and we help others. That's when God can use us as an instrument to see dreams come to pass. It's so good to watch for who needs to be raised up by your kindness and your help. Then believe your life is in the hands of God, and He will cause His will to come to pass for them and for you. We're going to pray for that right now. Oh God, we thank you for the opportunity to show your kindness to others. We desire to do it to please you. And we believe as we do, many dreams are going to be fulfilled. And now I pray for my dear friend and the dreams which are in their heart. I pray you show them every step to take and what you have for them to do so those dreams can become reality. It may be dreams that are simple and every day, and then they have the big dreams, and all of those are in your hands. We believe that, and we pray that you help them to help others see their dreams become reality. And in so doing, very powerful things are about to happen. Yes, they're about to enter into a time of great rejoicing because of what you will do. And we praise you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, you have to believe that word from God's Spirit. You're about to enter into a time of rejoicing in spite of how things appear. Hold on to that. Believe dreams are going to come to pass. And I encourage you to share those with me. God has called me to minister to you and help you see all those different dreams happen. So be sure to tell me what they are. I'm here to pray with you in a personal way. When I hear from you, I'm going to lay hands on what you share and intercede. And then I'm going to write to you. I'll send you a letter that's filled with the words of encouragement God wants to use to minister to you. So be sure to get a hold of me soon. All right, I'm going to give you a spiritual power line. And as you express it from a heart of faith, You'll begin to see yourself this way, and that's when God can work through your life. So go around saying, I am kind. I am kind. And as you go around being kind, you're going to cause dreams to come to pass. Praise God. And now to help you, I want you to get this teaching. We'll send you all five parts of the message and the prayer times. Those are times when God's Spirit can minister to you in such a powerful way. So as for the teaching, change the future by kindness. It's offer number AM625, that's 625, and we'll send you a CD for a gift of $8, or you can go to our website, and there you can download it for a gift of $5. Now, tomorrow, find out what else can happen in your life by your kindness. Be sure you join me tomorrow. This is Jeannie Alcott. God bless you. We pray that you felt God's Spirit minister to you in a powerful way today. Jeannie and John invite you to contact them for prayer and to receive a letter filled with God's Word for you. Write to Alcott Ministries, Post Office Box 3400, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013, or call 918-459-9191. Our website at alcottministries.org is available for you to share your needs or to request items. That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries.org. There you can also listen to Word of Power broadcasts and receive an encouraging word and prayer for your life. Please be sure to request the entire teaching for a gift to Alcott Ministries. We encourage you to join us as we give financially into God's work and then expect a great blessing for your life. Be with us next time for A Word of Power.